Hi, and welcome to the Sabbath Christian Church's online sermon. Psalm 4 talks about a sacrifice of righteousness, not animals. What is the sacrifice of righteousness? How do you go around and destroy righteousness? But sacrifice and righteousness have somewhat uh, different meanings as well as the usual. Proverbs 21.3 says to do righteousness. Righteousness. Now we know righteousness is what God says to do right. The commandments. This is our connection with him. And justice. Now justice is to use the words of the Bible. That's justice. This is what's just. You know, I am the Lord your God. You shall not take uh, anybody's name, uh, you shall not take the Lord your God's name in vain, and so forth. This, to do righteousness and justice, is desired by the Lord more than sacrifice. I mean, sacrifice is dead and done away with? Well, animal sacrifices and all kinds of uh, killing sacrifices are done, gone, forever. Mark says, talking about righteousness and justice, he said, and to love him, God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh, everlasting one, the eternal, to love him with all the heart. I've done this in detail, the heart and understanding, all the strength, everything that is a part of us. You know, just as you are alone with the whole you know, being. Okay, yeah, you could say that. Yes, you could say it that way as well. But with all your heart. Then the heart meant the center of a person's being. And there are some coronary arteries down there. And with all the understanding and with all the strength, all of our thinking, our mind, our heart, our being, all of our strength and power, that's how we love God. Righteousness and justice. Now that's uh, a way of talking about the first four commandments. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. And then he goes on to say, Jesus goes on to say, is much more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices, which they were still doing then. Soon to end, but not quite. And we know how it ended. He says now, and Hebrews says, by this we have been sanctified through the offering and the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. All the sacrifices that they once used, this is the sacrifice to end all sacrifice, once and for all. All the other sacrifices you had to do some daily, some weekly, and so forth. This one sacrifice for sin is over. Penalty of sin is death. Now, Psalm 4, 5, to offer a sacrifice of righteousness. Okay, he uses the words that the sacrifice of righteousness. And this is a sacrifice. This is not the killing off of sacrifice, but giving up everything else for sacrifice. That's a sacrifice of righteousness. When, done, when one does righteous, when one is righteous, and more to, more to expand the righteousness, is a, off, that is the sacrifice, rather than the animals and other things. That is the sacrifice. And trust in the Lord. Cannot offer a sacrifice of righteousness, cannot love God, cannot do anything with God without trust. Trust is a very important aspect of God, not to say that love and everything else is not. And in Hosea it says, Take the words with you and return to the Lord. Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously, that we may present the fruit of our lips. Yes, righteousness. That's how we can praise God. When we're behaving righteous, the sacrifice of righteousness, we present the fruit of our lips. Praise God. And in Psalm 63 says, because your loving kindness is better than life, that's where our loyalty comes from. 
God proves his loyalty to us over and over and over again. He never fails to keep his word. Never, ever. We need and we do and have the greatest loyalty and trust in him and love for him than anything else. And he says, so your loving kindness is better than life, better than life. My lips will praise you. I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul is satisfied with the marrow and fatness, and my mouth offers praises with joyful lips. All the love, all the righteousness, all the loyalty, and our mouth offers praises with joyful lips. A little more on loyalty. Psalm 90 says, Satisfy us in the morning with your faithful love. It said we woke up. We're alive. We're breathing. So that we may shout with joy and be glad all the days. Not only are we alive and breathing, but that will go on for eternity. Make us rejoice for as many days as you have humbled us. Need the humbling. Very important to get the humbling. Have to work at things, have to get over things, have to be humble. And you just, just can't live without that. Cannot think of oneself more highly than one ought. Particularly, cannot think of oneself more highly. Period. Hosea says, I delight in loyalty. God says that. He gives us his loyalty and we need to be loyal to him in return with the sacrifice of Righteousness, doing his way and his word, living up to the contract. And the knowledge of God, rather delight in loyalty than sacrifice, and in the knowledge of God, rather than burnt offerings. Even back then in the Old Testament, they knew what was more important. And Psalm 96 says, For the Lord is great and highly praised. He is feared above all gods. Is, and if you're about, for all the gods of the peoples are idols. Who else created the world? Who else gave us his holy days? The creator, the Lord. Who else did anything? And yet the people go about worshiping and keeping days that have nothing to do with God. They worship idols that can't breathe that don't exist, whether it be the sun or anything else. But the Lord, he says it, the Lord made the heavens. The splendor and majesty are before him. We see all of this in him. Strength and beauty on, are in his sanctuary. But people will not see that. They will do anything not to believe that he is the Lord, the eternal one, the everlasting one. He says, and uh, Psalm 96 says, bring an offering and enter his courts. Worship the Lord in splendor. Tremble before, tremble before him. Uh, an offering? What offering? Walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up as an offering and sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma, which is said in the Old Testament. He gave up everything for us. We are to give up all the old ways for him. The Lord appeared to, and said, I will build you and, re, and you will be rebuilt. That's what Jesus did for us. Actions speak louder than words. Justice and only justice, uh, Deuteronomy says. Learn to do good, Isaiah says. This is how we uh, become rebuilt. Seek justice. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. James says, if you look at the perfect law of liberty and abide by it, that had become a forgetful hearer. He says, pure and undefiled in religion is the sight of our God, to, is to do this, visit the orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself unstained from the world. And James goes on to say uh, that the tongue is a small part of the body and yet it boasts great things. See how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. The tongue is a fire. 
the very world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members, of which defiles the entire body. It sets the course. And he goes on to say, from the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things are not to be this way. Actions speak louder and words speak louder than words when they are praising God and showing God our love for him by what we do. Amen. I thank you for watching and listening.